Hey guys, Signosia here, this time with something new, a Guardian Druid Guide for patch 5.4. I'll start off by explaining you guys my background as a Guardian Druid. I'm playing in a casual guild outside my Warlock's raid schedule, as the schedule in my main guild is not that heavy, so I have time to squish in some extra raid days for an alt, which I use with my friends, which is this Guardian Druid. Anyways, this guide will cover stuff like how to optimize your gear as a Guardian Druid, how to use your active mitigation, how you should optimize your DPS, and when to use your CDs. Hope you enjoy. <coughs> Let's start off with some gear optimization. Guardian Druid scales heavily on crit ratings. Now, let me explain you why. Whenever we crit with Mangle, we gain extra rage above what we already get, as well as when we crit with melee hits, we also gain extra rage. And with this huge extra rage generation, we are able to spam our active mitigation. Now, crit, has, crit also has some in-depth for Guardian Druids. There's a crit soft cap which is 79%. You want to get this by using flask, food, fully buff and being in bare form. Now you might wonder why we would why you would go for the weird number 79%. When I just started going in depth with my Guardian Druid, I thought it was some kind of soft cap for our mangle to always crit. But actually it's much more complicated. I'll try to explain the soft cap as well as I can. The 79% crit soft cap has everything to do with our alter text. Our largest source of rage is from alter text, which is why we care about it. The basis behind the number this number is that there is always a chance that an alt attack will be a glancing blow. A glancing blow is a non-crit melee hit which deals 75% the damage of usual melee hits, which works out to have a 24% chance to occur, and there is absolutely nothing we can do to reduce the chance of glancing blows. Even if you have 100% crit chance, you will still have the same number of glancing blows with alt attacks, as if you have 0% crit chance. So basically having 79% crit does so your alt attacks will always do either a critical strike or a glancing blow. The reason it is 79% and not 76% considering the 24% chance of causing glancing blows is due to a mechanic called crit munching, which occurs on bosses that are 3 levels above you. Crit munching reduces everyone's crit chance by 3-4%. to This is also the reason why hit and hard expertise cap is very important for Guardian Druids as a dodge, parry or miss will also reduce the amount of critical melee hits you'll perform which is kinda obvious. So basically your stat priority looks like this. 2550 hit, 5100 expertise, then 79% crit, then haste and then mastery. Ok so the reason why haste is what we want to go for as our secondary stat after crit is not only because we'll perform more auto attacks but also because more alter attacks will give us more tooth and claw procs. I will explain tooth and claw later in the guide. For sockets and stuff like that, like um, enchants and stuff, um, I would recommend that you use 320 crit in yellow sockets and um, 160 crit and 120 stamina in blue sockets and 160 expertise and 160 crit in red sockets. In the meta circuit, in my opinion, the DPS meta gem is best because DPS as a tank in 10 men is so important that like the 20% damage reduction you get from the tank meta gem um, is not as good as the DPS one because you can just call like all the CDs you have in your raid. If you do that properly with good communication, you will not need the 20% the damage reduction you get from the tank meta gem. So, in my opinion, you should use the DPS meta gem. For enchants, just get as much crit as possible, and then obviously the usual enchants with the stamina on your chest. Right, so let's go through some talents and glyphs quickly. Both talents and glyphs are very optional for Guardian Druids and won't affect your gameplay that much. Though the two last talent tiers are the important ones, you should always go with incarnation at as it's simply amazing, it allows you for huge burst damage as well as amazing rage generation. Incarnation also does so your taunt has no cooldown, which makes it very easy to taunt off several mobs hitting something you don't want them to. In the last tier, I recommend using Nature's Vigil, as it's a good damage increase and can be lined up with your Berserk. It also works good as a raid cooldown, as it heals everyone depending on the damage you deal. You can also use Heart of the Wild in case your raid needs your tranquility at some point, though 
This requires you to leave bail form and perform a tranquility, which is which in many cases isn't a good idea. Heart of the Wild also allows you to use rejuvenation in bail form, which could be good, though using all your global cooldowns and reju on the raid will lower your damage and rage regeneration significantly. So I won't recommend you. I won't recommend it. Glyphs are totally optional, though I don't recommend using the Guardian specific glyphs, as they are in the end is not worth it. So pick whatever suits you and your raid. Glyph of Maul is the only essential glyph for Guardian Druids. Okay, so let's move on to how your DPS rotation looks like as a Guardian Druid. In 10 man raiding, a tank's DPS is a big portion of your raid's total damage, which makes tank's DPS very important. Many tanks think that DPS is irrelevant for tanks because it's not their role, though that's not the case. Tank is actually able to deal a ton more damage than actual damage dealers. In 25 man rating, tank damage is obviously not as important as in 10 man, though it's still there and it will still it will still increase your rate's performance. DPSing a, as a guardian druid is very simple. It's actually just keeping up your fresh debuff, then use mangle or lesser rate whenever they're off cooldown. I'll explain how to use your rage later on in the guide. Your aim as a Guardian Druid is to end the fight with as many mangles used as possible. So basically, you want to focus on optimizing the amount of mangles you use. Every time your dots ticks, you have a chance on progging a cooldown reset for your mangle. So keeping dots up is obviously essential. Though, using Berserk and Incarnation whenever they're ready is also important because they allow you to spam mangle. Though, you should always keep your fresh debuff rolling even during Berserk and Incarnation. Do make sure you don't use those two cooldowns at the same time, as they both dust so that your mangle has no cooldown. So basically use either of the CDs and spam mangle till the duration runs out, then use the other. Tracking vengeance is also very important. Using Berserker incarnation with very little vengeance is not a good idea. You can track ven vengeance with various add-ons. I personally use Vigars to track my vengeance. Now let's move on to Exim Mitigation. Exim Mitigation as a Guardian Druid can be very RNG dependent though it is quite strong. Your Exim Mitigation abilities are Savage Defense which increases your dodge chance by 45%, Tooth and Claw which is a proc that makes your maul cause the enemy to do less damage on its next melee swing, and Frenzied Regeneration which heals depending on how much rage you have. You should always try to keep 100% uptime on Savage Defense, it's almost possible to if you manage your 2 set bonus, which gives you a savage defense when buckskin expires. Try to time your savage defense duration so that it expires around the same time as your buckskin. If, you if you have very good gear and a very high crit chance, you should also use more whenever tooth and claw procs while keeping savage defense up. This will decrease your damage taken significantly. Frenzied regeneration scales extremely well with vengeance. Already at 200k Vengeance, your Frenzied Regeneration should be able to heal more than your maximum health when used with 60 or more Rage. Though, this should only be used as a panic button. You should only spend Rage on your Frenzied Regeneration if you know that your healers won't be able to heal you enough to allow you, so, to, allow you to survive the next melee swing from the boss. Spending Rage on this ability will decrease your Savage Defense uptime, so it is really a panic button. The weakness of Guardian Druid's Exim Mitigation is the fact that they are the only tank class without an Absorb Shield, which makes them rely a lot on dodging. Abilities that you can't dodge, such as Execute and the General Nesgrim, can be very difficult to deal with as a Guardian Druid. Right, let's move on to how you should use your CDs. Using your CDs at the right moment is what differs a good tank from a bad, in my opinion. Just popping every CD in your spell book when your health drops low won't get you anywhere. You need to know when you're going to take high damage and pop defensive cooldowns in advance. Knowing what defensive cooldowns your raid has to offer is also very important, as well as being able to call out for those cooldowns. Many tanks rely on their own survivability, which is very bad compared to having good communication with your raid and being able to call CDs. Those CDs are Hand of Sacrifice from any Paladin spec. Ironbark from Resto Druids, Vigilance from any Warrior spec, Pain Suppression from Disc Priests, Guardian Spirit from Holy Priests, and Life Cocoon from Mistweer Monks. Loose cooldowns can be tracked with the add-on called Hermes. Your personal CDs are, 
buckskin, survival instinct, might of Ursoc, and symbiosis. Buckskin should be used as much as possible as it has a rather low cooldown and procs your 2 set bonus. Survival instinct is your shield wall, which should be used carefully and only when you know you are going to take big damage. Might of Ursoc is also a panic button, like frenzied regeneration. Use it if you aren't sure if your healers can heal you up before the next melee swing is gonna kill you. Symbiosis is only if you use it on either a death knight or a monk. It's a very minor cooldown. I personally use I personally use symbiosis on a paladin for consecration. Make sure you communicate with your healers. It's so damn important as a tank. Always let your healers know when you're going to take a lot of damage when you have no CDs available, or if you are going to use a CD and obviously if you need them to use something on you. Communication, communication as a tank is probably the biggest and most important part of being a tank. I hope this guide have helped you, and I hope you liked it even though I usually only make warlock videos. I just felt like I was so much into Guardian Druid that now that it would be cool to make a guide. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, I really appreciate it. See you guys.